Hey guys, we're back here in the basement fishing layer for the second installment of our uh, video on how to tie salmon trolling flies. And right here's the fly we tied the other day. And I'm gonna show you guys how to rig this up to uh, actually troll. So what we're gonna use today is I have some 50 pound mono big game here. Uh, some guys like to use fluorocarbon for this. I've used both. Um, I, with this rig, it's kind of big and flashy, and I don't really think it makes a huge difference. I haven't seen that it makes a huge difference with this particular rig going fluoro or mono. But if you want to get fluoro and spend the money, more power to you. If not, uh, this Trilene Big Game, you can get this for eight, ten bucks a big spool here, and this will last you forever. So we're going with the 50 pound Big Game today, and uh, we're going to start with about 32 inches or so of that and uh, We got that and our hooks are going to be we have a VMC uh, short shank round bend treble uh, number two treble and uh, any good number two treble will work and uh, Then we have a two aught Octopus hook here gamakatsu octopus. So the treble is going to be on the bottom uh, a couple inches or so above that is going to be the single octopus hook. I know some guys like to use, especially lately, like to use two single hooks and skip the treble. Um, try it out yourself. See what you guys like. I've always used the treble and had good hookups. Some guys think they get better hookups just using two of the octopus hooks. So uh, I guess that's up to you and just uh, try them both out and see what you like. And. Uh, over here we have our beads, some of our beads, and uh, this we're tying up the whiskey sour fly that we tied the other day, and that's got a lot of green in it. So um, we're gonna go with these green beads right here, and the beads are gonna go between the two hooks. We're gonna put a few beads in there, and that'll add some color to your rig, but it also uh, provides pr uh, protection from abrasion. Uh, from the teeth of the fish when they grab grab that fly especially between the two hooks you'll get a lot of abrasion from the teeth rubbing back and forth and these beads will uh, protect protect the line from that and they'll also add some color so we'll get everything uh, set up here and we'll tie it up okay so we have our hooks ready we got our line at 32 inches. Uh, the goal is to end up with this rig once we tie the loop knot in the end, uh, be about 21, 22 inches long uh, behind the flasher. And uh, that's that's the standard go-to length most people use right in that range. Um, these beads that I'm using are size two, but you can see I have some bigger ones here too. Doesn't really make a difference. Um, just whatever whatever you got, whatever you like to whatever you like to use. So. I'm gonna start out with the treble on the bottom, right here. And uh, we'll go ahead and tie that on just using a simple clinch knot, four twist clinch knot. We'll pull some through. Try and get close here so you guys can see it. Just one, two, three, four. Light it up a little bit. And cinch her up. I like to use my scissors or pliers or something when you're tying to get an extra pull. See that cinch down nice right there. Okay, so that's good. Trim that off. So we got our treble on there. Now we're going to put our beads on. I'm going to put our beads right above here. And because the single hook's going to be sitting like right about there. And the beads are going to be in between here, like I said, giving a little color, providing the abrasion protection. And so we'll go, I'm going to go three of these. Go one, two, come here buddy, three, okay. So there we go. Hold on a second here. Lose it. Okay, so there's our beads. 
So now we're going to put the second hook on. And this is just going to be a, like a simple inline snell knot. So we take our octopus hook here and we're going to go like up the shank, up through the, the eye of the hook. So I'm going to try and get close. Hopefully you guys you can see this. I'm going to go up through and we're going to pull it all the way down to where our beads are here. And you got to think about how far your skirt's going to hang back when you're fishing it. So you can see, here's my fly. So my fly is going to be sitting there. So I don't want to make it too long because I want basically the end of the skirt of the fly to be about even with the, with the back of this treble hook. So that's kind of what I'm going for. And so you can see this single hook is going to be the bottom of the single hook is going to be about halfway down this top bead here is where I'm going to tie it. So hold it in place. I'm going to try and get close here. Hopefully you guys can see this. And I'm going to wrap down the shank of the hook about four times again. And then after I wrap down, I'm going to go back up through the same hole. And that's part of the reason you can't really go too small with these single hooks when you're tying this because you'll never be able to get the 50 pound back up through the eye of the hook. You need a little bigger eye. So here we go. We'll go one, two, three, four. And then we go going right back up through again here. And you can see I'm going to have to probably push it a little bit, even with the size 2 hook, to get it back through. It will go. I did get it. And just uh, had to uh, apply a little pressure there. And then you just pull that tight. And again, I'm going to hook it on my scissors here. Pull the whole rig nice and tight. And that is it right there. So... We're looking good. So now we're going to rig this up like we're going to fish. So we'll take our fly out and go ahead and slide our fly down the line as well. There we go. That looks pretty good. You can see that. All right. So it's looking pretty good on the length and everything. You can see the back of the skirt is still covering the treble. And so, like I said, we want to be about 22, 21, 22 inches when we finish this rig up. So the way you get that is. pull our tape measure out here and usually what I do is I'll just make a mark right on the table with the sharpie or something or uh, when I was doing this on the boat all the time I just made a mark on the uh, one of the antennas so I can measure it off real quick because I you, you, if you fish a long day you'll retie these a lot you know if you got a hot one going uh, you'll be tying new rigs and um, so what you want to do is so my bottom of my treble hook's at zero, right there. And I'm gonna go up here to uh, 22 inches, right there. And that's where I'm gonna make my loop, okay? So now, I made my loop. We're gonna put our, our treble back down here at zero. And you can see the top of my loop there is right at 22. So. We have our loop, we have our right length. We're just going to take this and just do a, a simple overhand knot. Tighten that down. Trim off our excess. And that is it. loop at the top that's going to clip onto your flasher and you got your fly down here with your two hooks all ready for a big salmon attack 
So I'll set this up on a flasher so you guys can see what that looks like and we'll be done. Wanted to show you guys this too. This is one way you can store them. Just a piece of pool noodle, which uh, works great for storing all kinds of rigs. And uh, you can rig them up on here, either with or without the fly on them. And uh, you know, just stick the treble in, in the foam, wrap it around, and put a pin on the loop or uh, hook it back over the, the shank of the hook and you're good to go. So that's a really handy way to, to store them if you want to make them ahead of time. And I'll show you how rig it on a flasher here. This is uh, just a blue spin doctor, blue glow. And uh, so this is the, the front of the flasher trolling this way in the water. This is the back. So we're gonna take our loop and you can see uh, some of these, depends what kind of flasher you use, they'll have different terminal tackle on them. This just has a big swivel on the back. So we have our loop already made here, and uh, so we're just gonna, we're gonna go right through the back eye of that swivel, and then we're gonna put our rig back through the loop. And just cinch it up tight so essentially you're looping it right on there there we go cinched her up nice and tight on there get close hopefully you can see that and that will not come off that's a good connection there so we got our flasher here, which you know is going to be doing f rotating in the water, creating all kinds of flash. And then we got our 50 pound mono all the way back here to our impossible to resist king salmon fly here in the back with our treble hook rig and our beads. And that's it. That's good to go. So. If you guys haven't fished these before, if you're mostly spoon fishermen, uh, try these out. I mean, you'll catch a lot of fish on these, especially uh, later in the summer and early fall when the kings really start to pile up in shallow water. Uh, you can really, uh, there's days when this is all we run. We don't even run any spoons. We're running all meat and flasher flies. So uh, try them out and uh, use this technique to uh, maybe tie up some of your own stuff and save yourself some money. And that's it for today. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Take care.